Hello YouTube and welcome to another Moto Vlog. Coming at you from my house the day after. Having a good time, relaxing, and doing a little overdubbing. So here we are on the Mid-Atlantic Backcountry Discovery Route, Route 4 to 5. And that is, uh, excuse me, that's Moorfield at the south, we started at, to Shepherdstown in the north, where we ended. And um, we had a great time, no incidents, no problems, and uh, let's just get started, you know. If you just want to take a look at the scenery, as usual, I implore you to mute the sound and um, put on some music, put this on in the background, and just take a look. Otherwise, stick with me and uh, have a listen. So this is our first little adventure off the main roads here, and uh, very quickly we ran into this road that is just all loose gravel. You can't really see it, but it's paved road, just covered in gravel, so as you can see, we're going very slowly. This is the part that goes kind of up and down a hill, and uh, we're just taking it easy. I'm, I'm keeping a big distance because if I get close, I'm going to get that gravel kicked up into me. So I made a bit of a mistake here. I actually forgot to switch off my traction control, which is kind of bad. Um, my motorcycle's traction control is really designed to work on, you know, normal surfaces, you know, your pavement, your tarmac which is, you know, consistent and sticky, and you're not really expecting to slide. When you're in a situation where you're expecting to slide, it's best to turn your traction control off because you want to regain traction on a surface like this smoothly. And uh, if the traction control kicks in, you might regain traction very suddenly and have a nasty little high side. So always keep that in mind that, uh, you know, when you're on a surface that you expect to be slipping and sliding around on, traction control really isn't your friend. It can do a lot more harm than good. So, as you can see, we're having a good time here. Everyone's making it through, even though we got some bikes that aren't exactly designed for, you know, grippy surfaces. The nice thing about these roads is that even though there's not a whole lot of grip, they are very smooth. So, bikes, you know, um, like touring bikes and sportier bikes are still going to have the same level of performance, basically, as, you know, your adventure bikes. Because, you're, you, you know... Regardless of what tires you're running, as long as they're sufficiently soft, you're going to get pretty good grip. Well, relatively pretty good grip compared to, you know, other bikes. So now we're going down the hill here, and uh, that's pretty much it for this. There's just more of the same if you continue on. So we're going to... Well, we're at the end of the road, actually, so <laughs> we're going to cut it off and go to the next clip. So now we're out here on our next little leg. This is, um, this little two-lane road here is very long. Uh, we, we stay out here for like, oh my gosh, probably an hour. So I'm going to cut this up and just show a couple little clips here and there from this road just to give you an idea of, you know, what it looks like, what's going on, and things like that. No, nothing too special. This is a really nice road. And, um, it's very scenic and uh, quite nice. So let's keep going. So you can see this is just the start of it. We're kind of getting our bearings, seeing what's going on. These roads are, are very nice and they're not well traveled, which is great. Uh, they're paved decently for the most part. But you do have to be careful, right? Because you are going to get random bits of gravel and random bits of this, random bits of that. Um, Especially in blind corners, you know, when you can't see it coming, if you're traveling too quickly, you know, too much speed, too much lean angle, ugh, you might be in for a nasty surprise, and you might be intimately introduced to, you know, the Earth's surface, which isn't somewhere you want to be. <laughs> Another thing you got to really watch out for is your vision, and not outriding your vision, and not using incorrect lane position. Now, I say this, and I'm not trying to be disparaging to the guy leading, he's doing just fine. What I mean is, when you're going around a blind corner, you do need to be very careful that you leave yourself, you know, some escape routes. Because there's a very good chance that you're going to run into someone, like there's the mailman in his right-hand drive Jeep. But if he, if he had been, you know, going from one mailbox to the next, we would have come into him around that set of blind corners and, um, 
You know, the guy in first might have had to take evasive maneuvers. So keeping your speed low enough, keeping your lane position good, and, you know, not outriding your sight lines is really the key. So we're crossing this little bridge. As you can see, we picked up the pace a little bit. We're getting a little more comfortable on this road. So that's nice. Having some fun, you know. And as you can see, we're making a nice little left turn here. So everything's going good, you know, I mean, the one downside to this ride, and the only real problem was that it was, you know, super hot. I don't know what we were looking at there, but yeah, it was super hot, super humid, like well above 90, you know, somewhere between 90 and 100 Fahrenheit, and, you know, at least 60% humidity. Uh, very humid, just very sticky, humid, hot. You know, just feeling it. It yeah, gets the next day. And I do feel better now, but man, I was not feeling good when I got home. I I actually had started uh, recording. I, I tried to put together a video yesterday. I just didn't have the energy for it. I fell asleep while editing. And the next thing I know, I'm in my, you know, comfy little computer chair. And it's like 45 minutes later. And I had completely fallen asleep just sitting there in my chair. I, and that's not something I do much. I was that tired. So here we got another little clip. As you can see, um, I just think it's beautiful out here. You get these grassy fields and the random houses and these nice twisty roads. Man, who could ask for anything more? This is just like the greatest ride. This is the kind of stuff I live for here when it comes to motorcycling, you know. Attacking a nice uh, two-lane road that's, you know, got a painted center line and painted white lines, you know, that's all well and good going fast and everything. It's dangerous and you know illegal and it, it, this, something like this is just a lot more fun just chilling out enjoying the sights the smells the sounds just everything that you can enjoy on a road like this that you couldn't enjoy a, you know while going fast and of course we have no traffic coming at us we got no traffic ahead of us we can just go at our own pace and of course no traffic behind us we can literally just go at our own pace and do whatever we want it's just amazing so now finally we're coming up on this you know hay farm or whatever this is you know look at all those hay bales that's crazy that's a lot of hay bales for sure <laughs> I mean, just hundreds and hundreds of them where did all that hay come from that's what I want to know so as you can see, like uh, on these roads, sometimes the pavement quality gets a little worse. You know, the edges of the road don't look great. There's a little bit of wet spots. We can see a lot of cracks and bumps and dips and stuff like that. And uh, we saw some dirt. And um, you just you just don't know. Sometimes that happens. And especially you see when you're around certain areas that are more like with all those burned out cars can imagine there's more of like an industrial or commercial thing going on and when that's going on you can maybe expect more damage on your on your side streets like this on your, you know your country lanes that's what this really is right a, a one a one lane country lane where you know people drive from the main roads down here to get to their houses they don't really use them too much as through routes because there's faster ways to get from point A to point B but as you can see, you know, with, as I mentioned before, I mean, one lane. You got to ride slow enough that if a car's coming in the other direction, you can get out of the way. Stop and get out of the way. Stop or get out of the way, you know. Just got to. It's your only hope. So now, again, we're still continuing on this road. And, I mean, we finally reached the end of it after, like, it felt like forever. But it was great. It was totally great. Now we head on to a, a nice faster road here that's, you know, fully painted up. And um, I would say this is a fairly narrow road, but it's open enough that you don't really have to worry about oncoming traffic. So that's great. Got a couple of, you know, <laughs> squids, no gear, just a helmet, that kind of thing. But hey, living your best life 
guys. It's hot. I don't want to wear gear. I totally get it. I'll wear the gear. I'd rather sweat than bleed. And of course, dress for the slide, not the ride. So, it's all good in the hood there. So the gear I'm wearing, you know, is a little excessive. I've got my, you know, full face helmet, leather gloves, you know, the uh, Dionese leather race gloves, my BMW adventure jacket, which flows some decent air, but it's still pretty hot. It's more of a winter, or it's more of like a fall, winter, spring jacket than a summer jacket, but hey, it's still very protective, you know, and it's got D3 armor for the back, the shoulders, and the elbows, so yeah, you crash in it, and uh, you wouldn't get too messed up, so I mean, you, d you just slid on the ground, you know, and rolled a little bit, not, didn't come to a quick stop by, you know, striking an object, and then I've got leather race pants on, ooh, those are hot, but not much hotter than uh, Kevlar jeans, so I kind of like the race pants, makes you feel, you know, kind of like a badass, and they're fairly comfortable, and they're not really significantly hotter than uh, Kevlar jeans, so hey. And then finally, you know, above the race pants, I've got some, uh, oh, semi-street, semi-race boots. They're, they're, they don't have the ankle support of, like, real race boots, but, you know, they're very, they're very, you know, safe and leather and this and that, and, uh, you know, they're meant for, you know, street riding with your occasional track day, I would say. So that's my full gear setup. Um, I, I don't really think enough to give exact model numbers and things like that. I just don't care. You can go look up whatever you want or maybe ask me on this video if you really care. <laughs> so as you can see, we're continuing uh, down another country lane. This is like another little cut through from one area to another. And um, it's pretty great. Again, I mean... We've got just a, a wider road than before, so, you know, two cars can actually fit on this one as opposed to that country lane we were on before where it was, like, a car and a quarter's width. Now we can easily fit two cars, so you can go a little faster and be, you know, a little more conscious of your lines in terms of, you know, performance rather than just visibility to cars. As you see, that car came the other way, everything was good, no problems. So that's the way it works, you know? We're just having some fun, and speeding up, slowing down, changing the pace, keeping things interesting. That's the only way to do it. You just gotta keep things interesting. So here we come up to a nice little stop sign. So the leader, you know, came to a complete stop, but I kind of didn't. I kind of looked both ways and then crossed. I would hope that if I did something like that, when there was a car coming, I would stop. <laughs> that would be great. Um, so look at this. This is pretty funny. You can see the name of the grass out here by the out here by the road, and um, yeah, that, that kind of makes me laugh. That you know, we have all this tall grass everywhere, and then. It's that little strip of grass by the road is nice and manicured. Makes it areas seem a lot higher class. So good for them. Good on them for doing that. So now again we're back in the woods as usual. And again, I mean just having some fun. So if you're still here, thanks. Um I just wanted to tell you talk about some other stuff like the main thing is, like, why haven't I posted in a while? And, um, you know, I've had family in town. And it's been hot. It's been humid. Um, and I just haven't really felt like going on really long rides. Or if I did go on the one or two medium-sized, shorter, medium rides. And it, I just didn't feel like recording it. I didn't feel like bringing my camera with me. So I kept the camera at home. I just didn't didn't record a lot of those rides because like I said they're shorter rides and they're just not that interesting so now here we're coming up to a gas station finally making our first fill up um, I have a bunch of gas but needed a little more needed to top off 
be up in line with those big tank bikes. Everything but like crazy. Confusing. When I say big tank, you know, we got the GSA, which does have a big tank, and then we got the Triumph Trophy, which has a smaller tank. Even though it's a bigger bike, a heavier bike, but the engine on the Triumph Trophy is ridiculous. Yeah, mileage. I mean, ridiculous. Compared to like bikes like this, it gets like 10, 15 more miles to the gallon while making like very similar power. So that's pretty cool. So this clip here I included, um, I'm not really sure why. Um, yeah, we're just hanging out, no real problems. And uh, I think I'm just showing it because we have a little interaction later with this car, which just kind of puts the whole story together. You know, I think the car's pace is really nice, especially for somebody who's never ridden that road before, like us. We don't want to go too fast. We kind of want to take it easy, maybe have a little bit of fun here or there, which we totally can do, by slowing down on the straights and then speed back up in the corners or through the braking sounds. So, that always works out pretty nicely. If you ask me, unless you got, you know, some impatient person behind you, who says it blow right by you and put you in your place, so to speak. So, this next clip here, we just got a beautiful view. Lots of people come here, obviously. You know, we got all these trucks and SUVs. And then if you look on the left side of the road, you're going to see like four, five, or six tubers. So we got some there. We got some there. And um, tubing's pretty fun. Got to admit, it's just such a chill day. You know, you get out there on the river with the tube and you kind of just let the river take you. And then you do the paddles on one side or the other sometimes. Especially if you don't know the river you're riding on. If it's going to uh, throw you left, throw you right, you don't do anything. So you always gotta, you know, be careful when you're tubing. But that has nothing to do with this, so I'm gonna change the subject. <laughs> so back to riding, I mean, we're just having a good time, for sure. Speeding up the pace a little bit, even though we got that car in front of us. We are, you know, going at a pretty fun pace, especially for guys like us who don't know the road. And we're not really, like, attackers, you know? We just take it easy and maybe sometimes go a little faster than we should. But for the most part, we're just taking it easy. So here's my buddy giving the uh, thumbs up to the car driver, which I think confused the crap out of him. He just wanted to let him know, hey, good pace, thanks for... Uh, you know, going a little fast to make it uh, fun for us. Instead of putting around at, you know, 35 and 45 the whole day. Which you see people doing all the time. Not just around here, but just everywhere, really. Yeah. You can see how long it took the guy to turn, even though there was no cars. That was kind of crazy. I guess they expect that you're not going to stop. You know, so they don't... They don't really stop, and you don't expect them to stop, and they don't expect you to stop, so, like, it kind of becomes a standoff there, or a chicken and the egg problem. <laughs> Build tunnel revving. So that little tunnel revving means we're next to the Sea Canal uh, pop up Bridge. Not pop up Bridge, the Sea Canal. I don't know what bridge this is. You know what? I'm saying things that aren't true, and I'm not going to go back and edit them. Sorry. This is just some bridge that's actually a toll bridge. It costs 50 cents per vehicle. So you'll see it in a second. As we come around the corner here, we would drive down onto the bridge. And we don't really know what to do, so we stop, sit around, and look. And then um, continue down the bridge. I think we were a little worried because we were looking for the toll and we may have been in hole. But it's not like some easy pass thing where, you know, they catch you real quick with a camera or something. This is, you know, you'll see a little toll booth with a, a nice lady who takes your chain and gives you, you know, 50 cents back. <laughs> 
Because, you know, not many people carry change anymore, but... Man, what are you going to do? So now you can see me uh, just getting ready. Getting off the bike, grabbing the money, doing the payment. My buddy paid for himself, the one on the upper left there. On the, uh, the GS, paid for himself and then not us. So I did another $2. $1.50 for the remaining three. It seems a very painless transaction. There's no need to do it. No problems. No problems. As you can see, I'm fumbling around with my gloves on this one. Um, maybe should have taken them off, but gosh, in the heat like this, it's very difficult. And we're off, finally. That was a long clip. I just wanted to show like the whole interaction. Hope it didn't bore you too, too much. <laughs> And so we go down the road and make a couple turns, and now we're back on one of these country lanes. It's the best part of this trip. It's a little back roads. And uh, you'll see here that um, we can't continue for some reason. And there's just got uh, GSs and adventure bikes. It would be no problem. But, yeah, when you're not on a adventure bike, and you run into a road like we're about to see, I think, either on this clip or the next clip, you know, you're going to have problems. And taking somebody who has a street bike outside of Mount and Sun Pay is... Man, I'm, uh... <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm still sleepy. I woke up too early this morning. I'm closing my eyes for a second to think, and then all of a sudden I'm going off into dreamland. So sorry if I say weird things or make these long pauses. I just can't help it. I just can't help myself. So here, yeah, as I was saying, and I was still on topic, you don't want to go up these rutted, you, want to you know, inclined dirt roads when you got a guy on a, on a Triumph Trophy with street tires and a guy with a beautiful Triumph C Triple RS with, with speakers or with, with, with street tires, with speakers, good God. So we go around, and now after that, we end up heading off to north and head back to civilization. And uh, I always love the view here, so I started pushing record right as we started getting close to it. It was the view, which is right here. So you can see it's just beautiful. We're way up here on this cliff. Man, you really don't want to fall off that as a biker. If you go high side over that cliff, you're going to be having a good day. So now we're at the top, and uh, one thing you can see is that the road is a little wet here in the shade. It did rain pretty hard, but, um, you know, a little bit of wet road. You still got great grip. Nothing to really worry about as long as you know, there's not, like, pooled water. So as you can see, some wetness. We're continuing. Nothing really. Oh, those might just be shadows. So this, as crazy as it sounds, you know, it would be wet and cool in some places and then like dry and hot like just a minute or two from there. It would just change up and down depending on what weather front hit what house. So as you can see there, we had that church on the right. You probably missed it. And then um, here, on the, here on the right again are these giant stables. And that's what we were talking about, right? You got got nothing out here except this giant church and these giant stables it's kind of funny so you know there's some money out here right I mean the people living around here are fairly wealthy and uh, able to build all that stuff you know usually when you see a church it's like a rainy run down the thing but this one is just absolutely unbelievable unbelievable excuse me Now we're doing a little more riding. We're getting near the end of the ride here. We picked up another one of our friends who is now behind us. But uh, yeah, he likes riding in the back, just like me. And I give him a chance. I give him a chance. So this is 
a fairly long clip. It's not like that long, but it's just again showing off some of the view, some of the twisties, you know, just, just chill, chill ride. And as you can see, we pull up to this stop. And I always, you know, I try not to roll through the stop signs. You know, I'm not biting around, right so I'm blocking those directions. And I don't mean another bike blocking both directions. I'm talking about like a car or something. You know, keeping the traffic shut down. I guess another bike could do it. A guy with a bike off the bike. But man, with a bike, someone just plow him over and keep going and then they kill everybody. You know, what a. What a way to go. <laughs> Man, I'm having a hard time, guys. Sorry again if I'm mumbling or rambling or saying weird things. I got to take a nap or something. <laughs> I just didn't sleep last night. I was excited to talk to some people. I was excited to watch the MotoGP race and excited to make this video. I think it looks okay. Um, I'm going to do some color grading after I render the video and hopefully make it look even better kind of mute the highlights and bring up the shadows just a little bit and make it a little less contrasty is probably going to be my game plan. And then you know me, I'm going to submit it like forever on YouTube. So now we're kind of coming to the end here. We don't have a whole lot left, so I want to thank you guys for watching. We're back uh, through, we passed through Shepherdstown at this point. Now we're headed back. I just like this little clip. Nice little cloverleaf, you know, turn. And then you can pull away really hard and go really fast if you feel so inclined. I'm going to take a look at my GPS. Hopefully I can see it and uh, see kind of what speed I'm going here. I think it's about 100 I accelerate up to and you'll see the guys ahead of me pulling away. Uh, I can't really, I can't read it at all. Unfortunately. <laughs> I can't read it at all in my little window here in uh, Premiere Pro, so <laughs> I'll have to just guesstimate. About 100, maybe a little less. And that felt about right. You know, I... I I'm not really a speed demon. As you guys know, I'm anything but a speed demon, so taking it easy. But man, still going pretty fast. I think I'm cruising here like 90 miles an hour, and if, you know, look at the, the scenery. It's like I'm barely moving. And now the speed limit comes down, and we cross this little river, the Shenandoah, and uh, this is kind of the end, guys. I want to thank you for watching, putting up with my crap, my little falling asleep. Man, my chair is too comfy. My chair is just too comfy, and if I close my eyes for a second, the think or the blank even, <laughs> it's like I start falling asleep. I guess I'm, I'm so bored by my own video, I can't help it. So anyways, guys, thanks again, and think about your riding.